Warning. Censorship. Warning. Censorship. Bowmanville, when you go through there right now, there's not even a car down town like people aren't even doing curbside i don't think they have it in them they're like mentally just just gone and that's why the meditation was such a beautiful thing to have all these women in business who were losing everything mentally in their in their homes in their lives in their jobs we needed that to keep us afloat mm -hmm. and i got a fine for it for f meditating for Rebel News, I'm Tamara Ugolini, and I am catching up with Jess Downey, who came into the Rebel Portal through the I Will Open campaign. Uh, we featured Jess's story about a month ago. She runs a small business in Bowmanville, Ontario called Boho Beauty Microblading and Spa, and they decided to defy some of the restrictions placed on their small business by offering full service, full steam ahead, to their clients. And so Jess has now pivoted into our sister campaign, uh, Fight the Fines at fightthefines.com. So Jess, I understand that you were fined for hosting a meditation series at your business. Maybe can you tell us a little bit about what unfolded that dreadful evening? Yeah, it, it was such a I think, okay, so what had happened is I did like a nonprofit event for women to come in and do a meditation circle with a meditation guide. Um, so it was just like, come, come at night, bring your own little, little blanket and pillow. And um, it was just women who were looking to just lift their energy and kind of start that lockdown on a positive note and try and just connect with like-minded people. Um, we were all distance apart. We did our meditation and I had posted on, um, my Instagram that we were having the people in there. So somebody actually had called the cops, um, before the event happened. So the cops had watched all of the women like come into my shop. They actually spied in the windows as we were meditating. And then at the end of the meditation, they, um, they knocked on the door and continued to place the fine. That's not the first instance that I have heard of cops peering through windows at night. We just featured a story of a poor couple in Elmer who <laughs> also had police uh, prowling at night in their windows to enforce some COVID restrictions. So that's very bizarre. Um, now you've You've received a summons to court as per the police who responded to this. So what did the police say to you about this summons? So when they had, um, so I first saw them because we had just finished the meditation and we had sat up, we were all feeling so lovely. And I saw the jacket kind of passed and they went, oh, the cops. And I was like, oh, they just walked right by because it was so dark and we were all sitting on the ground, right? And then I saw them kind of loop back and come in to the shop corridor at the front of the circle and try to keep good. And they were just like sending me good vibes. And I opened the door and at first, so there was two cops, there was a male and a female. Um, um, the female did all the communicating. The male couldn't even like look me in the eye. It was, I, and I said to him, I was like, you don't even have the balls to look me in the face. Like if you're going to do this, you need to be able to have at least that, you know, like, he, so it was the woman who kind of took charge at first. She was kind of being like a little bit of aggressive at the beginning and just said like, what are you doing? This is a lockdown. You can't be doing stuff like this. We got a call at seven o'clock. We've been here watching you the whole time. So then I was like, well, why didn't you, if you knew about it before and you actually cared, why didn't you just say, listen, call it off and we won't do any of this, right? Mm -hmm. They let me go through with the whole thing, had all those people come into the shop, which I think there was like 11, 11 women in there. Um, and my space is quite big. You've been in there. So we all had our own little pocket that we were laying on. Nobody was talking. We were all just laying, meditating, right? So then she said, um, this is a $10,000 to $50,000 fine and every single person in there should be fined $1,000, but we're going to scrap the $1,000 fine and just give you the ticket. And then I said, but like, 
what if this was all of my staff, you know? Mm-hmm. And she was like, well, is it? And I said, well, like, how, how can you prove that it's not like, uh, what if this is just all my staff and we're in here renovating? Like, is there a difference? And she was just like, well, uh, just, we just don't want to be doing this. Like, just please don't do anything that you're getting paid for. And I said, but I didn't get paid for this. I said, this was like a, a nonprofit organization that I just put together to help these people with mental illness. Like if you would have listened to this open circle at the beginning, we stated why we were there and every woman was suffering from suicidal thoughts, lost the job, lost the home, lost her marriage, like all of these heart wrenching things. I said, we all need this. And I said, this is a domino effect. Every single woman that's in this circle, once they leave here and they withhold this strong energy with these women, it's going to carry on to being a mother, a better mom, maybe fighting for a better job, fighting to keep her home, all of these things. And the police officer actually started getting really emotional. Like I do as much as I was upset with them for what they had done, you could see it in her eyes and him not being able to really hold eye contact with me that they were actually like very upset that they had to do it. What has this summons meant for your business? Are you remaining open? Well, once that happened, so when that happened, we were a week and a half into lockdown and we continued working like I said we would. But then as that happened and things started to get really strict with like the gray area and like like all of these fines, um, we were seeing our schedule going from really busy because thankfully Rebel News had sent us so many like freedom fighters and all these people wanting to help keep the business open. But even those people, we started to see them drop out of our system, like rescheduling for after the lockdown and we can't go there and work if we don't have clientele. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great point that you bring up, Jess, because you, I hope you don't mind me touching on this, but off camera, you let me know that you've actually sold your home and relocated quite a far distance from your business. So I think you mentioned like two and a half, three hours, um, the commute that you're, you're enduring now because you were forced to sell your home simply to keep your business afloat. And so if you're not booked with clients and people are no longer coming in, then it, it doesn't make sense for you to travel and commute to be there to open anyway. No, it doesn't. And I, and you're right. So I, I live three and a half hours away right now. So I did have to sell the home, which was a brand new house that was custom built. And like, I was only in that home for just under three years and selling it, it had to be done. It was either wait for a second wave, which we knew it was coming and then completely lose everything or sell that, have some money in the bank. Right now I'm, I'm literally like in an RV. <laughs> That's what I went from living in my home to staying in this. Thankfully I had purchased property before kind of any of this had happened, but I've had to redo my entire life life to keep the business going because it wasn't only me that was gonna lose I have like 11 girls that work with me you know Mm -hmm. so they would have lost everything as well what would this summons mean for you if you didn't have the help of our crowdfunding campaign at fightthefines.com well first of all I wouldn't have the guidance that's been given to me like what to say and what to do what my rights are so that's been a huge thing for sure and now having somebody to help me fight that to prove what the rights are like I would go in totally blinded if I didn't have you guys and I wouldn't have had the support that I had even just through the community and people just looking and reaching out like having this like this has got me connected to like Adam from the barbecue place and all these different amazing freedom fighters has just been um, such a blessing. And I'm so grateful for Rebel News and for you for doing everything that you've done. It's taught me so much about my rights and giving other business owners their their rights as well. Like there's other people who have stayed open and it's all because of what you guys have taught me. I really love you guys a lot. (laughs) I'm glad to hear that it's helping you. So your court date is next week. And so perhaps we should do an update after your court date, but how will that change moving forward? I mean, how much longer can you sustain a closure? I I think uh, another thing that people did, another story is I actually had a business that I had to close down because of that landlord. I lost everything. I was only there for two months. I had invested almost $10,000 in renos and then lost that business. So I closed the business, wonderful landlord. I have now reach out and she's just been amazing like so far she's been like if you're not if you don't have the capacity to stay open 
for this month because of all the work you put in and everything you've already been through. Like the other landlord's trying to find me as well. She's trying to take me to court for $10,000 and how much more can I give, you know, like mm -hmm. this is out of our control. So I've been very grateful so far that my landlord has um, been very lovely with uh, my rent this time, but I don't know how long she can sustain that either. Bowmanville, when you go through there right now, there's not even a car down town like people aren't even doing curbside I don't think they have it in them they're like mentally just just gone and that's why the meditation was such a beautiful thing to have all these women in business who were losing everything mentally in their in their homes in their lives in their jobs we needed that to keep us afloat mm -hmm. and I gotta find for it for meditating <laughs> Do you think that, that the way out of this situation is simply mass civil disobedience by business owners? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think, we, yeah, we just all have to, we all have to go against it. But the you feel, you almost feel as much as you don't want to feel bad for the police at this, like those people, I really did feel bad for them. I felt I could see it in them. You could see that they were just like begging me, like, please don't do this. We do not want to come back here and do this again. Jess, do you have, you know, if you had a message for your fellow small business owners in Bowmanville, what would that be? People are struggling so bad. I think it's all of us have to unite. That is a huge thing that's lacking right now in every level of humanity we're lacking unity and when we unite beautiful things can happen and I think it's time that we all do that mm -hmm. it sounds like uh the road to ending the lockdown is is just that exactly what you say to unify and come together in some civil disobedience and say enough is enough and the lockdown it's doing more harm than good we've done our part we've had enough we're we can't take this uncertainty any longer. So I look forward to seeing how uh, this this goes for you next week, Jess. We'll, we'll follow your story closely. And um, if you want to join in the, the campaign at IWillOpen.com, please submit your business there. And we will get Ontario back to work, what Doug Ford campaigned on, Keep Ontario Open. For Rebel News, I'm Tamara Ugolini. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the Rebel News channel so you can stay up to date with our stories as they break. Here at Rebel News, we're putting out more content and showing the other side of the story more than ever before that you don't want to miss. In order to receive premium Rebel content, please consider subscribing to Rebel News Plus at rebelnewsplus.com.